Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this beautiful January morning. We're out uh, in the first snow of 2024 doing some training, okay? And right now I have Charlie on a leash. Charlie is about an 18 week old, what people refer to as English or show lion Labrador retriever. Uh, and she was built for this weather. I mean, she's been going all morning and uh, I don't see any signs of her slowing down and getting ready to go inside the building. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk Charlie and then we're gonna compare to some of the other dogs that are here. And uh, this is going to kind of give you an idea of if some things to watch out for uh, as you're out walking your dogs in the snow. Okay, so let me get Charlie to stand up here. Now you'll notice that Charlie's got a nice square build. She's got a lot of fat on her, a really thick coat, nice uh, thick uh, otter tail, big feet, big head, okay, big torso here, big chest, right? So that's all really designed well to keep heat inside, okay? This dog, she doesn't get too awful cold, and uh, as far as like even this wet, sticky snow, uh, let me get her up here on this uh, A-frame and so I can show you. Come on, Charlie. You'll notice, like Charlie doesn't really have, get up here, babe. Charlie doesn't really have any snow sticking to her. She's got a little bit of snow on her paws and her legs, but watch, I can just wipe that right off. See how that comes right off? If it's on her ears, I can just wipe it right off, okay? Now, that's really important when you're out playing in wet snow, guys, because let's see if we can get another dog that you can look at. Bear, come here, Bear. Let me take and uh, take a look at Bear here. Oh, come here, Bear. Let me get him over here on this table, cameraman, so we can take a look. All right, so Bear is a Bernese Mountain Dog Australian Shepherd Cross, okay? And that's a, <laughs> that's a very interesting combination. Maybe I'll make a video about Bear next week if he's still here. Okay, but let me get him up on this table so that you guys can see the different uh, effect that wet snow has on Bear. So come over here a little bit closer, cameraman. Now, you guys can see that, like, all around Bear face and his ears and on his feet he has this fine hair and that fine hair has accumulated moisture and uh, ice right so the dogs get out here and they play they rub their heads in the snow but even worse than that what they do is they slobber all over each other and then that slobber turns to ice and it attracts more snow and the next thing you know they, they'll have a lot of ice uh, around their their neck and ears okay now something else that happens with these kind of dogs is if I can get if I can get that where you can see it I don't know Okay, you gotta really be careful with dogs that have a lot of this kind of fine hair on their legs because look at all those little ice balls, you know? And kind of what can happen, uh, just, just, and it can happen very quickly uh, off of those ice balls, uh, is the dogs will like sit down and they'll start, the ice balls will be uncomfortable and the dogs will sit down and start trying to chew them out of their hair and out of between their toes. And, uh, you know, and in between their pads, they'll, they'll, they'll cut their pads. Okay, and so then what you have is you have the introduction of bacteria into those cuts, and uh, you can you know you can get a you can get an infection pretty quickly. I had a dog just here, just here last week or the week before, and he just started off with a little sore on his leg. He started licking on it and chewing on it, and it blew into a into a big thing. He ended up having to wear a head collar. I mean, it was just a lot of trouble. Okay, now we have another dog running around here. If I can round her up, and you can see, and you can see. Uh, you can see this same phenomenon, but taken to more of an extreme. Okay, so this is, like I said, a Bernese Mountain Dog and an Australian Shepherd Cross. Now, both of those dogs are outdoor dogs, okay? Uh, and a Bernese Mountain Dog, we have them out here all the time, and they do pretty well in most types of snow, but they do a little bit better when it's like a really dry cold, you know? Uh, when it's a wet cold with a lot of mud and, uh, and, and, and the temperatures are hovering around freezing, we have a lot of problem with them. Australian Shepherds, they got that kind of fine, wispy hair. Uh, I mean, they're okay, but the same, same problems pop up. They get a lot of those ice balls, and we find that they get that kind of frozen mud in their uh, coats, and it's really hard to uh, take care of. Okay, let me see if I can round up Zeevee. Zeevee! Hey, dogs! Now, Zeevee is a black Labradoodle, okay? And now people will say, oh, come here, nerd, you can do it. Now, I might have trouble getting a hold of Labradoodle here. And we, my wife actually calls all the Labradoodles and all of the Golden Doodles and various Poodle Crosses, uh, she calls them all Dodgy Doodles, okay? And what we have found that if we don't get them at a very young age, uh, like they're real skeptical, 
And a lot of times they don't like forward pressure and you go to putting a leash on them and stuff and they'll develop this habit of jumping away. Well, that's kind of like Zevi. And so she's been tricked a lot of times into like, uh, like, come here, come here, come here. And then they put the leash on her. And so now if you even point the leash at her a little bit, she darts off, right? Okay, so if you have one of these dodgy doodle crosses, and I know all you Labrador, Aberdoodle aficionados are going to be like, oh, it's a real breed. Okay, whatever. Uh, look, uh, like, like, don't trick them, guys, okay? Because I'm going to have to stop the camera and go over there and find the dog and put her back on the leash. Yeah. Because she was tricked as a puppy, and uh, they, those poodles, they, they pick up on those, uh, those tricks pretty quick, and then they don't work. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> I rounded ZV up, <laughs> and uh, now we're back. Uh, so I'm going to walk her over here and put her on the table so we can take a look. But, uh, you know, dog trainers, uh, like I any kind of Labradoodle or, or Poodle Cross, it's a good source of income for dog trainers because uh, they, they can develop some, I mean, pretty predictable, but like, uh, you know, pretty easy to fix problems, you know what I mean? So, uh, like when people buy lots of these doodles, like when they're real popular and they kind of trend upward and downward sometimes, uh, like... Uh, <laughs> It, it's really funny because everybody has the same problems with them, right? Uh, and the solutions are all pretty simple. So, it, like, dog trainers like, uh, like it when you call them if you have a doodle. Okay. So, now look, here's what we're going to point out here. Okay. Uh, look at that coat. You know, I mean, I've, I've made so much money in the past over people who buy dogs that they think are hypoallergenic, you know, and uh, then all these idiosyncrasies pop up in the dogs and uh, you know people had to bring them out here to get them straightened out because they don't do their early training okay guys if you're going to get one of these dogs do your training early don't wait till that uh, mid pubescent period when they start being nippy and dodgy and barky and all that stuff uh, but I just want you to see like what it's like for me to manage this dog okay now does this dog not shed? Uh, maybe not much. You know, is it hypoallergenic? I don't know. This is what I think about these dogs with all this hair. I think they go out in the world and they collect things and they bring it back in your house and they shake off in your house. So I think that these dogs are kind of like dust mops. Imagine you have a hypoallergenic dust mop and you drag it around outside and then you come in and you shake it. You might not be allergic to the dust mop, but what about all the stuff it brought in? Brought in? So I'm never sold by that particular thing, you know. But this for me... This is a lot of extra work during the, during the day, okay? Because you can see, I mean, come up here and look at this cameraman. Look at that. Do you see all that wet snow that's frozen in that pad? And if you were that dog, right, you know, when you're moving, you don't think about it. When she's moving, she's just moving. But as soon as she stops, guess what she's gonna do? She's gonna go to try to chew these, uh, these, these ice particles out of her hair and out from between her pads. And guess what that leads to? Uh, that leads to bacterial infections. And then next thing you know, uh, you know, you, 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 you got dogs limping, having to wear a head collar, take antibiotics, stuff like that. And you know you've let it go on too far, right? Okay, when you look down on the snow and you start seeing little bits of blood. Okay, and that happens all the time with these kind of dogs. So if you have a dog that's got a coat like this, okay, when you take them outside, okay, really keep an eye on them and watch for that snow and ice buildup because it can turn into uh, quite a bit of problem uh, and very quickly. Okay, so here's Zevi. Let's get her up here and then we'll switch off. Oh, good boy, cowboy. All right, now here's another dog, okay, with a little bit of coat. This dog's name is Cowboy and he is a cockapoo, right? Now, uh, these cockapoos are pretty good little dogs. They're kind of healthy. Uh, they learn pretty quickly. They still got, wouldn't you say, cameraman, a little bit of that dodginess to them, okay? Uh, and, but we like them, okay? Uh, again, steady source of income for dog trainers. Uh, but look, I want you to come here and look at his face. Look at that. You ain't gonna see any of our labs. I'll get another lab here in a second and show you. You're not gonna see that with any of our labs, okay? Uh, so, when I'm encouraging you to go out and exercise with your dog, okay? Um, I fully understand that different types of dogs require different amounts of oversight, okay? If you have a dog and you're out and you're adventuring with them, take into account how the dog was bred, what type of coat that it has, what type of snow you're in. Are you in a dry snow or a wet snow? You know, are you in windy conditions? Does the dog have a wind break? Uh, and, and then adjust from there. And if you're not a dog expert, you don't really need to do tons of research you can just kind of watch the dog. Like, so for instance, what I'm looking for when I'm out here with these different dogs is I'm looking for the dog to either start showing like uh, that it's a little bit aggravated with, with ice buildup like in his paws or in his hair, or I'm looking for it to go stand over by the building. You know, if we let these dogs out, 
in the morning and they're having a good time running and playing. It's, it's all good. I just kind of keep an eye on them, okay? And then once they start to, like, sometimes they'll start to come over by you because they're kind of saying, hey, Dad, let's go in. Uh, or sometimes they'll just go over next to the warm spot. Or if you're out at the dog park, they'll go sit at the fence. Or, or you know, if you're just out in a field playing, they'll go sit by the truck. Okay, Charlie, come on. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> come here, nerd. Let's call Charlie back over here because I want to show you. Oh my gosh, very good dog. I'm going to show you the difference between hair, uh, snow on the face of the cockapoo and snow on the face of this. Oh, you okay? Snow on the face of this lab. So just a second ago, now this is a Catahoula leopard dog. He's not supposed to be up here. He's from Louisiana. Now just a second ago, the reason I tried to call her, she was over there playing in the snow and her whole face had like snow build up on it like the cockapoo had. So I'm just going to Recreate it. That's what she kind of looked like when I was trying to call her. That's why I had trouble getting her over here. Okay, but watch. We're going to walk for a minute. Okay, I'm going to let her go through this tunnel. And then, <laughs> uh, here's another lab. And then I'm going to wipe her face off. <laughs> Come on, nerd. Now, look, the snow's almost already gone, but I can just take my hand and just wipe over her face like that. Just do like that and see how all, all that snow and ice just goes away, okay? It's just a dog, it's uh, you know, bred to be in this type of weather, you know? Uh, and uh, about this time of year, usually I'll, I'll make a you know, lab video of labs playing in the snow and stuff. And people always tell me, they say, well, Stoney, that wasn't fair. Last summer you made a video with that same kind of dog and you said that they uh, were, you know, kind of low to moderate energy level and uh, that they couldn't keep up with the, field bred dogs and all they wanted to do was sit on the four wheeler and watch the other dogs fetch. Uh, yes, that's true. I do pick on these English chubbies a little bit, uh, you know, during the summertime. But when it's winter time, when it's winter time, this is what you get. Look at her. She's just wanting to eat and play in the snow. Now this dog is from South Carolina. She has never seen snow before. So she's not acclimated to snow. She's never seen cold temperatures. She's not acclimated to cold temperatures. That's just just who she is. She's born to be in the cold weather and she has been enamored with the snow and eating snow all day long. Okay, now I'll show you a couple of others here. Come on. Now here's some other labs. Okay, a field lab and then a couple of English labs and uh, they're just running around and playing. And I don't know if you can see this. Where could we go here, cameraman? Uh, come on, dogs. Up. Come on. We'll get them up here. Now these dogs have been out. It's probably like mid-morning, like I said, these dogs have been out since it started snowing, uh, you know, probably a, just a little bit before sunrise, and there's no snow on them, you know. Now look at, look at Cowboy, look at Cowboy's face here. Okay, so guys, when you're out, just use common sense, you know. Think about what kind of dog you have, uh, but understand that, like, you don't have to be a dog breed expert to know uh, whether it's time to take your dog uh, back inside or not, okay? Uh, if your dog looks happy and uh, doesn't have any ice balls on it, if it's not over sitting by the car, sitting by the door, if it's got a high energy level, probably wants to stay outside and party, you know? If your dog is like ZV or like Cowboy and it's got, you know, ice balls all over it and ice balls in between its feet like, uh, like Bear did, okay? Well, you gotta keep an eye on them. And sometimes, okay, you have to be a little bit proactive and even take them in before that they're ready to go in, okay? Now don't use that as an excuse to be lazy and not let them play, but if you just like your first snow, write down how long you were out, write down what kind of problems you had, right? And uh, then just keep records, and before you know it, uh, you know, ages two through 11 or 12 or 13 or how long you'll be out adventuring, okay? You're gonna have a really good uh, understanding of what your dog does in the snow, how long they can stay outside of the snow, uh, and what it takes to keep them healthy. All right, well, I hope this video helped some of y'all. Uh, I will see you next week. Very good dogs, very good snow dogs. Oh, they're fine animals, very good.